and welcome. Today we're going to learn how to make an HTTP GET request in Airtable using the Data Fetcher extension. So for this tutorial, we're going to get a list of football competitions from football-data.org, and then we're going to populate our Airtable base with that data. So an HTTP GET request allows you to fetch data from an external API in Airtable. And then in order to bring it into our base, we're going to use that Data Fetcher extension. So just up here in the top right hand corner, we're going to select extensions, select add an extension. And then again, you'll see the search bar here in the top right hand corner. And we're going to search for data fetcher, just like so that will pop up. We select add and we select add extension. Now you can either create a free data fetcher account, or you can simply continue with Google. The following screen will load and it's time to import our data. So select create your first request and under application, we want to select custom. Now we are wanting to retitle this request. So we're going to title this as fetch football competitions, just like so. Then for the method, we're going to keep this as get. Now for the URL, APIs usually offer multiple endpoints so that users can access different functionalities and retrieve specific data. The football-data API has many endpoints, such as teams, competitions, as we saw here, matches is the endpoint on this one. They also have persons and areas. So for this tutorial, we want to import Spanish competition data. So we're going to connect to the competitions endpoint. So you can copy this URL without the matches. We'll paste it into our URL here, and then we're going to type competitions. Now, in order for us to retrieve Spanish competitions, we need to add some parameters. So here we're going to select the add button. For the parameter, we're going to type areas just like so. And then for the value, we're going to include the Spanish ID value, which is 2224. If you wanted to retrieve all competitions, you could just leave this without any parameters. So as you can imagine, each area in the API has a unique ID. So we can include one or more IDs to fetch competitions from specific areas. Now above, you'll notice how the URL has since changed with this added parameter. Now we can select save and run in the bottom right hand corner and select continue. Now we'll arrive to the response field mapping. And this is where we can decide which fields we would like to have included in our Airtable base. So you can map each field to an existing field or it will be mapped to a new field and it creates a title here that you can then change as well. So this has brought us 30 new fields but we are only actually wanting five of them for this tutorial. So in order to switch them all off, you can simply select that deselect all button. And now we can include the ones that we'd like to have. So we are wanting the competitions ID and we just turn that on like so. And we're going to map that to a new field and we're going to title this simply as ID. Perfect. Then we're looking for the competitions area name. We're going to select that. Then we're wanting for this to map to a new field and we're going to have this titled as area. Then we're going to look for competitions name. So we can simply search here or we can scroll to the right, which we have found here, turn that on. And we're wanting for this to map to an existing field. And from the drop down menu, we're going to select name, then competitions type, which we just have here. We're going to select this and map this to a new field, retitling it as type, just like so. And from this little drop down menu next to it, this is for the field type. And we're wanting to choose single select from this. Then we'll be looking for competitions, current season start date. So we'll turn this on and we're going to map this to a new field. And we're going to just retitle this as current season start date. Really nice and simple, just like so. Now we can select save and run in the bottom right hand corner. And as you can see, these fields are now being created. Select show output table, and you can close that little window over on the right hand side. And you'll see that this information has now been imported into your Airtable base. So besides the parameters, you can add authorization and headers as well to your get requests in data fetcher. So authorization is used to access certain features of API or APIs that require user accounts. So for example, football data requires users to sign up for a plan to get access to other endpoints and make more requests per minute. You can use authorization in data fetcher. So if we open up this extensions option again, that will pop up immediately to what we have already created as a request, as you can see here, we'll open that up. And just next to that parameters, we have this authorization option here. And then under type, you can enter your credentials. Then we have this headers option here in the tab list as well. And request headers are information included in HTTP requests to give servers more details about the request a client needs. So for example, a request might include a user agent header containing details about the user's browser and operating system. Other types of request headers are used for authentication, working with cookies and whatnot. So on the other hand, servers use response headers to send information to tell clients more about a response. Since we only make requests in data fetcher, we'll use request headers. And if you head back over to our blog on this topic, you can scroll down and we have links 
links for you to learn more about headers in this article. And then if you are wanting to run this request automatically without you having to do a thing, so instead of having to rerun the request, you can simply use our schedule option here, which is a paid data fetcher option. So if you haven't yet upgraded to the paid data fetcher account, I really recommend that you do so that you can schedule all of your requests to have them running automatically to keep your records updated without you having to do a thing. So hopefully today you have learned how to make an HTTP GET request in Airtable using the data fetcher extension. But like I mentioned before, we do have a full length blog on our website at datafetcher.com where you can learn that way as well. Thank you so much for taking the time to learn today. I really hope you have a good one.